Okay, this URL right here is my subversion URL. And if I go into File Explorer, I can use Tortoise, and I can go into my repo browser, and it says, in repo browser, it says, where do you want to look? And I can say, yeah, look in database crafting and click OK. And then it opens up the repo browser, and I can look at what's in there. And what I have in database crafting, do you guys see this? Look at this. I have tables. I have functions. I have stored procedures, right? And if I open up my stored procedures, I can see my get customers stored procedure. And I can right click, and I can, I can open it if I want to. And that, that opened this for me, right? So what I want to do, if I open up tables, and I look at vendors, and I open it, you see this? So I'm not pre-baking the turkey here, right? I'm showing you what's actually in source control. So what is this in source control here? If I open up a table, I see this. If I open up the, employee, the employees table, I see this, right? If, if I open up, um, you know, a stored procedure, I see this. So the question here is, what exactly is in source control? What's actually getting put in source control? And the answer is, and this might surprise you, I'm going to open up paint. You know what, I'll save this just in case you guys want this. So I'll save this as like, um, get source control history. Okay. So what's actually in source control? It's actually only a bunch of create statements. Create table, create proc, create view, create trigger, create index, right? It's the actual create things. And now you might be wondering, well, wait a minute. What happened when I had my local dev system here? So here I am in local dev. And what did I do? I added columns to the vendors table, right? And what happened here? Like, how come I'm not seeing an alter table add column? That's what you'd expect to see, right? Because I put changes up into source control, didn't I? Actually, I did not put changes in. I, and I'm going to repeat that, because it's critical for you to understand how source control works here. I did not put changes into source control. What I did was I updated the create procedures for that table. So the way I did that, so when I added um, columns to vendors table, it used SQL um, schema compare just like you would do. The tool I showed earlier, it used SQL schema compare, and it compared your dev database with what was in source control. And then it created an update script. And then it applied that update script to source control. So that, uh, that create script always in an executable state. It does not track your migration pattern. So if I add a table, if I, if I add some columns, if I, if I modify the table or the data type, it doesn't just keep creating new update scripts. It instead only keeps the create script completely current. And now, if I'm another developer here, down here, and that developer needs those changes, so what happens when I get latest? It compares the create scripts with the local database, that developer, and on the fly, it creates an update script, and then it applies an update script, and that's what happens. I lost it, but you guys get the idea. So let me just prove that to you really quickly. So again, this is my repo browser. Here are my tables. Here's vendors. We know that we have some other things here for vendors, right? 
So I'm going to go back to SSMS. I'm going to go into Source Control 1. I'm going to open up my vendors, go to Design. I'm going to add a zip code, varchar9 or something, right? I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to commit changes. I'm going to say adding zip code. I'm going to go ahead and commit. And now when I come back and I look at vendors and I open it, there's zip code right here, right? Notice it didn't put an, an alter table into source control. It just made sure that the create table was current. So when we come back here and we view the history of vendors, so we right click on vendors and we say view history, what's happening? It's just showing us the way the create table script looked at the moment that checked in. It's not showing us the differences and the nuances here. Well, it is, but what it's doing to highlight the differences is it's highlighting what the create script looked like at version 16 versus what it looked like at version 17. It didn't just preserve some type of um, um, you know, update script for us. So that declarative um, type of source control, it's really important to understand that it is declarative, that it isn't statement by statement, because there are things that source control does really well, but there are things that it does poorly that we need to understand. And one of the things that it kind of does poorly is dealing with state. So again, we're not just comparing files here. We actually have state in these tables, right? The customer's table is filled with stuff. And, and we might lose some of that stuff if we just rename things, right? So let me show you that. If I come in here, name vendor full name, and then save it, and I'm going to check it in, and it says, oh, they changed vendor's full name to vendor name, right? And if I um, just say, you know, changing vendor name, and I commit, it's not going to care that that column already existed. It's going to drop a column, and then it's going to recreate the column. And if there was any data in that column, it's not going to preserve that column for you. Because rename, renames are notoriously difficult to track in SQL Server. So I'm going to repeat that because it's important, right? Renames. Um, default changes, nullability changes are very hard to track in SQL Server because they all affect state. Right? Okay. So sometimes source control is not, a, is not great at doing some of these things. Now, do you remember how before we had smart rename? So, you know, how you can right click on something with SQL prompt and you can smart rename it. Like, let's smart rename this table. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smart rename the vendor table to the vendor list table and click next. And it has a script, and I want to view the script. And this is the script for smart rename. And it just says it runs an sp underscore rename procedure from vendors to vendor list, which is great. And then it updates the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I run it, and it works. And I can show you that by going to tables and refresh. And there's vendor list, OK? So now there was data there. But because we're doing this declarative version of source control, we might lose all the data in the vendors table if we just let source control drop a table and rename it and re-add it, right? So what we can do is we can right click, and we can commit the changes to source control. And we could say, oh, OK, it wants to, look, it wants to drop vendors, and it wants to add to vendor list. And it says, these changes may result in data loss. Add a migration script to preserve data. So what I could do is I can say, for this change in source control, don't do what you naturally want to do. I want to force you to, instead of doing what you naturally want to do, I, wanna, I want you to use a script instead. So I click Add Migration Script. And um, I might need to create a migration script repository. So Create Folder, and I'll call it Migrations. Click OK. 
There's my migration script repository. I'll select that. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. So this, um, that's my option here. I can instead browse. Um, learn. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show you this really easily uh, without a lot of setup, and I didn't think about that before. Um, well, I'm not sure I have to show this to you, just so that you know that it's there, right? What you would do is you would say, don't do what you would naturally do. Instead, you would paste this script that we created with Smart Rename. You would paste it in as a migration script, and it would apply that migration script for like source control 18. And then when I went to another database and I brought down that change, it wouldn't do the declarative method of source control comparison. Instead, it would run that script, and that script would preserve my data for me. So that's what a migration script is, and it's very powerful, um, and it's very fast. And so in the interest of time, I'm not going to like walk you through that. Um, but I did want you to know that it was available to you. What else? Um, 